Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video I hope to somewhat demystify what multi-start threads are and how to cut them. Now at the same time as I explain what they are and what their use is, I need to say that you'll probably never have a need to cut one. But I think it is an interesting exercise. Uh, in the last video I did, previous video, uh, that dealt with left hand and right hand threads, where I put a left hand thread on one end of this piece of stock and a right hand thread on the other end. Harold Waters from the ARW uh, channel on YouTube commented on that video that uh, to him threading was one of the most satisfying operations you can do on a lathe. And for me it is as well. Uh, the synchronization between the spindle turning and the worm gear feeding in and being able to match that that synchronization each time until you get a thread cut. And with change gears or gearbox on a lathe, you're able to do it for multiple pitches uh, in both metric and uh, imperial. Even though you may not ever have a need to cut a multi-start multi thread, I'd venture to say you encounter a multi-start thread multiple times within the first hour after you get up in the morning. Here's an example. This morning I had it on my mind making this video and so I started looking for you know, or seeing if I encountered any multi-start threads. The first one I ran into was toothpaste tube. Toothpaste tube had three starts on it. It was a tri-start uh, uh, thread. The one of my medicine bottles I noticed had a two start on it, a two two sets of threads through, and then as I got the milk jug out to uh, fix my bowl of cereal, I noticed it had a four start uh, thread. So even though you may not ever cut one, you will encounter them and probably do encounter them about every day. I'm going to pull the camera in a little bit and show you some examples and show you the first time or an example of the first time I ever encountered a multi-start thread. It was in high school or maybe even grammar school and a ballpoint pen. And at that time I had no idea what multi-start threads were. I had no idea why it did what it did, what it does. But let me show you and show you an easy way to determine multi-start threads. Okay, here is a ballpoint pen. Obviously, this is not the one I had in grammar or high school, but it is an example of it. And if you've got a ballpoint pen, you might want to test this. If you notice right now, the pocket clip is lined up with the label on this big Atlantis pen. And there's only one label on there. I turn it around. You'll see there's only one label. Now I'm going to unscrew this, the cap on this pin until I, I'm going to back it up and I just bumped, let me check that again. All right, it's lined up there. I'm going to unscrew it until I feel the start of the thread, start of a thread. Right there. Now I'm going to tighten it back up again. The clip is on the exact opposite now of the label on the pin. So that means this is a two start thread. I'll bump it up, back it up again. All right. I felt it, the start of a thread. So I tighten it up now and it comes back lined up. That was my first encounter with one. Now I'm going to show you another one that is somewhat of an extreme.
this was my orange juice bottle. I emptied it yesterday morning, so uh, uh, I didn't encounter it this morning. I'm going to mark one of these indicators on the lid. Oops. Okay, I've marked this one indicator here on the lid. Hopefully it's showing up in the camera. And that's the only one that's marked. Now I'm also going to mark where it stopped on the, uh, on the bottle itself. Now I'm going to unscrew it until I feel the start of a thread. Alright, right there was the start of another thread. I'll tighten it up this time. And way over here is where it tightened up. Alright, let's do that again. And tighten up. And there's a third spot. So this has a one two, three start thread. And like I say, this is a bit of an exaggeration, but if you look up here, right there's one thread starting. Rotate a little bit, there's a second thread starting. And here is a third thread starting. So that means we got a three start thread on this one. It always stop on one of those, but not at all the same one. So hopefully you get an idea now of what a multi start thread is. This is a three start. This pin was a two start. And as I said this morning, I noticed on my milk carton, it was a four start. Now, what is the purpose of that? Why? Remember all these things I've talked about here. This ink pen, this bottle, uh, the milk bottle, toothpaste tube. All those are production line items. This is not screwed on by a human somewhere. That's the first time that is screwed on. It's by a machine. Same thing with this. Same thing with toothpaste, milk, whatever. What a multi-start thread does, watch what happens here. All right, I'm right at the beginning of a thread. That's all I've got to turn it to make it go in. This three-start thread means I only have to turn it one-third the amount to tighten it as I would a single start thread. With a two start thread, I only have to turn it half as much as I would with a single start. So why is that important to production or manufacturing? Well, there's a machine that does this. And if it can tighten that lid down in one-third of the amount of machine operation, then that's three times the life of that machine. It's doing one-third the work as it would if it was a single start thread. Now the mold to make that external thread and that internal thread is only one time. Whereas when we're cutting them on a lathe, multi-start threads is a little bit more involved than just a mold. But in my mind, that's the reasoning behind why so, ma so many manufactured items that go down a similar line have multi-start threads on them. And again, a single start thread as a normal bolt would be, if you look around that bolt, you'll only see one place where a thread starts. Same thing with a nut. So no matter how many times you take it off and put it back on, it will always 
land at the same position because there's only one position. Prior to getting ready for this video, I made a test cut. I did a, this is a two start thread on the end down here. I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not. But right here is one start. There's a thread starting right there. If I turn it 180 degrees, I see another thread starting right there. I cut this on my import lathe pretty much the same way I cut, similar to the same way that I cut other threads, but there is a dis distinct operation you need to do. I cut a matching two start nut as well. Alright, we're going to get to the lathe in just a second, so stick with me. But what I wanted to do in this video, again, is try to demystify it. I watched several videos on cutting multi-start threads, and it seemed like the more I watched them, the more confused I got, until finally laying in bed one night, uh, not being able to sleep for whatever reason, it dawned on me just how simple this was. You know, I guess all of you know Mr. Pete, uh, uh, Tubal Cane. I went back and watched, he had a two-part video series, each one on about 30 minutes. So he had an hour video demonstrating multi-start threads. And I love Mr. Pete, I love to watch his videos, but he can kind of go off in left field every once in a while, or as we say around here, he can chase a rabbit sometimes. So I want to try to keep it simple. Mr. Pete, if you're watching this, I'm saying it with the utmost respect. Uh, I watch your videos. I watch about everything you put out. Uh, but again, I want to just try to make this as simple as possible. For right now, let's pretend this is one inch right here. And there's eight threads per inch. This is going to be our cutting tool. So as this is rotating, the, the workpiece in the lathe is rotating. The synchronization between the spindle and the carriage through the change gears and the uh, half nuts means that this tool is going to move and cut that groove. That's eight threads per inch there. Now we're gonna we're gonna set the lathe up today for eight thread per inch change gears is what we'll be using. However, the depth of cut that we're gonna be uh, cutting is for sixteen threads per inch. If I take my thread gauge right now and put on this, that's sixteen threads. But I cut it eight thread at the time. So we're going to move this. We're going to cut with the change with the eight TPI change gears. We're going to cut the length of our piece to a depth for sixteen threads per inch because we're going we're going uh, this is going to be a two start. If we look on our uh, threading fish tail. On the back of them, for 16 threads per inch, that says 81 thousandths is the double depth of cut. So that's what we're going to move this cutter in, 81 thousandths, to get, that's actually going to be, uh, that's the double depth, so it'll be 40 and a half per side. Now, after we do that and get that to depth, we want to move this tool over so that it's set up halfway between the 8 TPI. So how do we know how much to move it and how to move it? We'll get to the how to move it in just a moment. 8 threads per inch is 1 divided by 8. So the distance between this thread and that thread 
is 0.125 inches, an eighth of an inch. One divided by eight. Now, if we want to go halfway that, 0.125 divided by two is 0.0625. So that means we want to start threading in here. We want to trick the change gears, if you will. Not really tricking anything. But what we're going to do is move over to where we're starting halfway in between our eight threads per inch. And we'll cut eight threads per inch this time, represented in the red, starting from this position. Now, that gives us in the end the 16 threads per inch, which by the way, 16 threads per inch is 1 16th, which is 0.0625, the same value we come up with over here. So the whole trick to this is going to be how do we move this over and not mess up the synchronization between the spindle, the change gears, the carriage, the half nuts, everything involved in threading. So let's move over to the lathe now and cut some threads. All right, I've got the workpiece in the uh, lathe chuck now. Uh, got some thread relief cut in here and some diecom on there. Now ordinarily on my threading videos, You'll see the compound set here at a 29 and a half, 30 degree angle. And I'll advance the compound for whatever depth uh, is applicable to the, uh, to the threads per inch or, or pitch that I'm cutting. In this case, I have the compound in line with the spindle. I've checked that with an indicator to be sure that the uh, protractor on here is correct. I have the workpiece perpendicular, or I'm sorry, I have the tool perpendicular to the workpiece. What I'm going to do is I'll bring this up in just a moment and touch that off. But we'll advance this, instead of advancing to the depth of our thread with the compound, we're going to do it with the cross slide. And the amount we're going to go in, remember on our fishtail here, that we're... We're set up for eight threads per inch. The change gears in the head are set for eight threads per inch, but we're going to do that twice. So we've got 16 threads per inch. And our fishtail says a 16 thread per inch has a double depth of 81 thousandths. So that's what we're going to move the compound in. I'm sorry, the cross slide in, 81 thousandths. All right, let's start out first. Touch this off. All right, we're touched off. I'm going to zero out the cross slide. All the backlashes out of it. I also have the compound at zero over here with the backlash out of it. And I'm going to set the X axis on the uh, DRO to, uh, to zero as well. All right, I'll back this off a little bit. Now come over here and I'm going to advance that 10 thousandths on the dial. What that will do is actually take 5 thousandths off of each side. Over here I'm going to watch for a number, any number, it doesn't matter. Back this off, come back over here. Now, if we take our thread gauge, we should see that we're cutting eight threads per inch. Maybe hard to see on the, the camera, but that is matching up exactly eight threads per inch. But again, we do not want to cut the depth for a eight thread per inch. If we did, this gap in between each thread 
would come out to the point. We want to go half the amount. So I'm going to advance now 10 thousandths at a time here. Wait for a number to come around. Back this off. That was a hundred, well that was 20. So I'm at 30 this time now and I'm just making a mental note here of where I am each time I'm at I'm 30. Back it off. This time I want to come to 40. I'm verifying that on the DRO. Put just a little bit of slick them on there. And here's our 81. I'm going to make couple, several passes of that, spring passes. Alright, I'm pretty well happy with that. That has cut us a 8 thread per inch. looking good. Now what I want to do, back this back off again, come back to the to the zero. Now here's where the magic comes in. Remember what we wanted to do, or what we showed on this little worksheet here, We've cut these. We want to move the tool over half the distance in between, which we determined to be 62 and a half thousandths. So over here, now you can set a uh, you can set a dial indicator down here if you wanted to, but I, I'm going to trust this dial, and I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 62 and a half. Now that should put our tool now at exactly halfway in between. So I'm going to make just a scratch pass here. That just barely touched. I'll come out here and go to my ten thousandths. Alright, now all I'm doing is the exact same thing I did before, but now it's cutting the thread halfway in between. I'm just going to keep advancing this to the uh, uh, ten thousandths at a time until we get to the eighty-one thousandths. Engaging on a number over here. Alright, I'm going to save that setting 
or not change anything over here take my file and just knock a little bit of the burrs off the top edge of these threads and see if our nut fits yet That's just a little bit tight and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to clean that up a little bit. Well there's some swarf in there I may be able to find my little brass brush here, wire brush. Alright, it could use just another thousandth or two on each one. So what I'm going to do with this set just like it is, I'm going to take just a couple more thousandths. Now, over here, I'll turn that off. Over here, I'm going to come back to the zero. I want to come past the zero and then back to it to remove any backlash and I will bring this to get an extra couple of thousands. Alright, I think that's going to do it now. Okay, let's step over to the workbench, do a quick little recap, and demonstrate that this is, in fact, a double start thread. Okay, back at workbench, I'm going to take a marker now and just, this is bottomed out. And mark on the bolt and the nut. The mating point or the stopping point. Now I'm going to back this off and if I can catch it just that was the thread back up. Now that should be the second thread there. Okay I'm pretty sure I finally got it on the second thread now so our marks should not be matched up this time. And they're not. There's the mark there, and if we look 180 degrees out, there's our other mark. I'm not sure, not sure how well those marks are showing up on the camera. But it is a two-start thread. And as I mentioned earlier in the, the video, at the beginning of it, I said probably one of the main purposes of that was production runs, uh, ink pens, orange juice bottles, milk bottles, uh, toothpaste tubes and so forth but another big advantage and probably the original advantage of multi-start threads is you don't have to turn this near as much it's faster to get to your end result where that comes into play in the industry a lot is steam valves water valves uh, Items like that where you, where you still want the fine thread, but you want to be able to, to get to that end point with less amount of turns. Again, with this exaggerated example here, we see from the click there, that's all it takes to lock it down. Less than a third of a turn. I hope I've demystified the uh, multi-start threads a little bit and maybe even shown a purpose to them. But more importantly, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe got a little bit out of it. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.